You're watching a Newsmax special with climate expert John Casey about his new bestseller, Dark Winter, How the Sun is Causing a 30-Year Cold Spell. In the aftermath of recent unprecedented cold winters, the UN and climate scientists are scrambling to explain their theories. When the scientific data and the experience of hundreds of millions living on the planet shows it is simply not true. Today, John Casey's book, Dark Winter, says the Earth is on the cusp of a significant drop in global temperatures as sunspot activity has already diminished and is expected to plummet to near zero over the next five to 10 years. Still, the UN and leading scientists and many politicians refuse to consider the impact of solar cycles on temperature. With their reputations on the line and untold billions of investment into the global warming theory at risk, questioning the near consensus thinking has not been allowed. In Dark Winter, author John Casey shows that the sun is clearly moving into a period known as a solar minimum, a period marked by greatly reduced sunspots and solar flares. As this solar activity declines, Earth temperatures will continue to fall, and these solar minimums have other consequences. One of the other things we've learned about studying history and its relationship to climate variation has been a very startling component to this story. The fact that we have our very worst earthquakes and our very worst largest volcanic eruptions at the bottom of these cold solar hibernations. Today's rate of volcanic eruptions is at the highest point in recorded history. Substantial volcanic activity is being recorded in Chile, Iceland, and the ongoing massive eruptions in Indonesia. The combination of increased volcanic activity and massive ash plumes distributed high in the atmosphere shield the planet from the sun and ensures the Earth will enter a period of intense cooling. Research I've participated in with other eminent geologists around the planet is very clear on this. Our worst earthquakes and volcanoes, our worst geophysical events happen at the same time the planet gets coldest. Let's look at the last time we had a solar hibernation in the 1793 to 1830 period, the Dalton minimum, if you will. The world's largest series of earthquakes occurred at that very time we were at the bottom of that solar hibernation. This was from 1811 to 1812. It didn't occur in Asia. It didn't occur in California or Mexico or Turkey or China. It occurred right here in the middle of the United States. Many people that live there know it well. It's called the New Madrid Fault. And the New Madrid Fault erupted with three catastrophic earthquakes, two 7.5s and an 8.0 approximately, within just a few months of each other during the winter of 1811-1812. If that same earthquake tragedy were to happen, the U.S. economy would be devastated. Uh, hundreds of thousands would be dead. The infrastructure in the central U.S. would be totally destroyed. Also on the volcano side, 1815, at the bottom of the last solar hibernation, the last cold phase of the sun, the world's largest recorded volcanic eruption happened in Mount Tambora in Indonesia. Mount St. Helens, May 18, 1980, that every American is aware of, was a catastrophic eruption as well, killed many people still living near the base of that volcano, caused dust to be scattered across much of the western, northwestern U.S. and the Rockies. However, Mount Tambora was 100 times the size of Mount St. Helens. The question of whether volcanoes have an impact on the climate is very real. It's another area that the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change pretty much dismissed. It wasn't even in a major factor in these early reports. On TV, in our workplaces and schools, Americans have been conditioned to believe that we are responsible for climate change. They have been exposed to a generation-long barrage of global warming propaganda, scare tactics, and manipulation of data to impose a socialist economic agenda on governments across the globe. It's interesting when you look at the debate over the causes of climate change to see that the vast amount of data that's most accurate are being simply ignored. Uh, we still see those like Al Gore and those who oppose Al Gore uh, go back and forth arguing over the role of CO2. But we see very little attention being paid to the most accurate theories, the most reliable science and the best climate prediction records. They're totally ignored. 
Certainly one of the main contentions of the warming crowd has been the pointing to weather extremes as a sign of man-made global warming. Uh, again, the reality is that that's not the case. Clearly, we should expect during a transition period from the past global warming to the new global cooling that we will see periodic interactions of deeper, more powerful cold fronts with the still existing warm fronts coming out from the tropics. That will produce extreme weather events, no question. But to say that man-made climate change as a result of CO2 from industrial plants is at the cause is simply not the case. There's been no real demonstration of the connection. So it's not the weather extremes that's important, it's the trend lines. And trend lines are clearly showing we're heading into a cold era. When people hear what I and others like me have to say, they're shocked. Their mouths drop open. They shake their heads. They can't believe what they're hearing because it's so compelling. And that's the power of the truth. But right now, we're still seeing the remnants of the 30 years of propaganda that says that mankind controls the climate, not the sun. These are ominous changes on the sun. Everyone needs to know about them and prepare for them. I am confident that we are growing. There are more people that are hearing this story, hearing the message, reading my book, Dark Winter, and books like it that tell the truth about the climate. So in time, I think we'll achieve the mission and that most of the people will have heard. In the next segment, John Casey draws a picture of the looming disaster the new cold era will bring. Make sure you get your copy of John Casey's bestseller, Dark Winter, available at bookstores everywhere. Or check out our free offer at Newsmax.com slash Dark Winter. Millions of Americans are turning to Newsmax TV on Direct TV 349, Dish 223, and Verizon Fios 115. Online at NewsmaxTV.com, Roku, or Google TV with our free app from your iPhone or Android. So watch Newsmax TV now.